So in this chapter, we finally started giving some answers. <laughs> so far, all we've been doing is shifting questions. <laughs> so we started with the question, you know, what do I really want from my life? Is it really about success or money or uh, reputation or prestige? And we found out that all we want is to be happy. But how to be happy? Well, change your vibration, <laughs> sure. But how do I do that? <laughs> how do I change my vibration? You don't need to do or add to yourself anything. Happiness is your natural state. Just remove suffering. Sure, but <laughs> how do I remove suffering? By controlling your desires. How do I control my desires? <laughs> By finding out what your attachments and your resistances are. And how do I find <laughs> what my attachments and my resistances are? By understanding what is your true nature and shifting your perspective from being identified with your thoughts and your emotions and your body sensations and your body in general toward shifting your perspective to being a natural and neutral observer of all that. And how do I do that? <laughs> you need to meditate at least 15 minutes a day. That will give you a healthy distance a bird's eye view, zoom out view to your thoughts, emotions, perceptions, and so on. Really? <laughs> That's it? <laughs> well, no, actually, <laughs> there is a much, much more to it. But, you know, to create a life of your dreams, there are, there, it is actually a two step process. First step is to remove from it anything you don't like and you don't wish. And when you remove major obstacles, then joy and happiness will start to flow through you and you will be in a much better position to create life of your dreams because you will have a perspective from the higher levels of consciousness and that is actually where true uh, creativity and inspiration lies. Inspiration is being in spirit, inspired. So, being more, let's say, spiritual, but actually on a higher level of consciousness, gives you inspiration and creativity, and you will feel freer and happier and more successful with much less effort. With much less effort. And this, well, we just said it's a two-phase process, so you need to remove what you don't want in your life and then get in your life what you do. But actually, these two processes are the most efficient when they are used simultaneously. So, it is just like walking. You have left leg and you have right leg. And sure, you can get anywhere jumping on your right leg and jumping on your left leg, but if you use both of them, it is much easier. So, from the next chapter forward, we are going to share with you technique, a way of perceiving, way of life, actually, that will, at the same time, give what you want and illuminate what's in your way for you to get there without much so we will be simultaneously creating a better future and leaving what we don't need and what we don't like behind us. But in order to do that, you need to at least understand what's, you know, what's standing in the way of your happiness and include 15 minutes of daily meditation practice. That will help you immensely. It really will. So, let's do a quick recap. There are several points in th that this chapter that we really would like you to, well, remember them or at least understand them or accept them in some way. First one being, you are not your body, your emotions, your thoughts or your perceptions. All of that is what you have 
not what you are. You are a neutral and natural, of course, observer or witness of all that. So next time you have an angry thought uh, or an angry sensation in your body or perception that the world is somehow antagonistic towards you or frightening or evil or whatever, just remember that, I mean, how do you know that you are angry? How do you know that you are afraid? Who is witnessing all that? And then pull out to that point of view of observer of all that. Just like that lady that had snakes in her recurring dream. When you pull out on the point of observer of all that, things are not scary anymore. And you have a real chance of dealing with that situation from the higher position, from the perspective of your well, higher level of consciousness. Number two. Happiness is your natural state. You don't have to add anything to be blissfully happy. Just remove suffering. Find out what you cling to, find out what you resist, then admit it, accept it, own it and change it. And this is really difficult to understand on intellectual level, because we somehow believe that we should create our happiness. We must create circumstances that are going to make us happy in order to be happy. But you do not. And this is the most important point from Buddha's Four Noble Truths. That Joy and happiness and purpose and meaning flows naturally through you if you don't resist it. If you don't have attachments to some things that you like and you wouldn't like to lose, or if you don't have resistances towards things that you somehow believe that are not in your best interest. And the truth is, you just don't know. You just don't know what's going to make you happy. And just accept it. Whatever life brings your way, accept it. And then, if you prefer that situation, if that's something that you like, great. If that's something that you don't like, take an honest look at your own attachments and your own resistances, and you will find the reason why you are resisting that. And then don't go into denial. No, 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 no. Don't go into, no, no, that's not true because the circumstances are what are making me unhappy. It's all about you. Accept it, own it, and then change it. Point number three. Suffering is not about the circumstances. Suffering is about your chosen attitude, meaning attachments and resistances, towards these circumstances. Now, the problem with attachments and resistances is that they are mostly unconscious. Well, mo many of them, maybe not mostly, but many of them are unconscious. But never mind that, because the process works. If you are feeling uneasy about a situation that's not that scary or terrifying or doesn't make other people angry, but you react with anger on that particular circumstance, well, that's your cue. <laughs> that's your clue that you should get into better investigation of yourself. Don't try to build better version of yourself. Don't work on yourself. Don't do self-improvement. Do self-exploration. Do self-investigation. See what's already in there. Okay? Just like Michelangelo, he saw a piece of stone and inside he saw David. And all he needed to do was remove from that piece of stone what David was not. That's exactly what you should do. Find out what you are not. Where are your attachments? Where are your resistances? And once you align yourself with your true nature, with your true purpose, 
actually, as we will see from the next chapter forward, life will be much easier and you will be much happier and much successful, much more successful with much, much, much less efforts because it takes no effort at all to be your true self. It takes all the effort in the world to be something that you are not. Never mind, is it unconscious or on an unconscious level? If you are creating a mask for yourself, it is a, maybe this is a, a little bit harsh word, but you are living a lie. You are not living your truth. So maybe this is a little bit harsh, but you understand what I mean. When you create resistances in yourself toward what you really are, and by trying to be something that you are not, that's very, very tiresome. And that is why you are tired at the end of the day. Not because you did a lot of stuff. It's because you were fighting your own resistances. And sure, even when you start living your true life, your true self, by the end of the day, if you did a ton of stuff, you will kind of feel tired. But actually, you will notice that your maybe body is tired because you were working in a garden, if that's your, well, best thing that you, if, the, if, you, if your soul is living for that. If you are born to be a gardener, that at the end of the day, of course, your muscles will feel something <laughs> inside, but you will be happy. And I mean deeply happy and peaceful and content. So it's all about that. Number four. Finding your attachments and the resistances is a lot easier when you meditate at least 15 minutes every day. Remember Zen proverb. If you are too busy to sit still for 10 minutes, you need to sit still for an hour. And we talked about this in much detail, but let me just remind you very briefly. So, let's say, for example, that you need to cook dinner for 20 people. So, you need to chop a lot of vegetables. And all you have in your hand is a dull knife. Now, chopping all those vegetables with a dull knife will take you about two hours. But if you take your time to sharpen that knife, that will take you 10 minutes, then you will be able to cut all those vegetables in half the time, probably even less. Meaning that if you feel busy, if you, if you are nervous and anxious and you are unable to still sit for 10 minutes because a lot of things are racing in your mind and you have a sense that you need to hurry up somehow. The best thing to do is to stop, to pause for 10 minutes. Remove all that clatter inside your mind that's saying that you don't have enough time. And then go and do things one by one. By sharpening your knife for 10 minutes, you will be able to cut all those vegetables in one hour. So it will take you one hour and 10 minutes with meditation plus cutting with a sharp knife. Well, with a sharp mind in this case. If you go and try to chop your vegetables without sharpening your knife, it will take you two hours. It is much more efficient to work on whatever that is you need to do with a clear mind with some sense of peace and with actually from higher perspective. Because when you are doing this in a hurry mode, in a, I'm afraid that I'm going to miss something, you will miss something. You will make an error or at least you will miss the opportunity to do that job better or faster or in a way that is much more efficient. So, when you notice that today you don't have 10 minutes <laughs> because your mind is racing and you need to get to work, the best possible thing to do in that particular scenario is actually to take that time of 10-15 minutes 
to calm yourself and then you will be more efficient and you will do all those stuff that you're afraid that you're not going to be able to fit into your day on time, much better, without errors and probably in a way that somehow you wouldn't even think about if you're on a level of fear and anxiety. But better solutions even help from other people, better circumstances will be suddenly available to you. I mean, they will, maybe they are going to present themselves even when you are here, but you're just going to ignore them. You're not going to see them. If you want to see them, you need to be as high as possible. So when you feel that you don't have 10 minutes, <laughs> then you should sit for an hour. This is a metaphor, but well, actually, quite literal one. Even if you take it literally, it still works perfectly. And number five, happiness is a path. It is not a destination. It is always here and now. A lot of people, when somehow trying to visualize their life, imagine themselves being a painter. So they paint a picture of their life, perfect picture of their life. And it's a, that's a fair metaphor, but there is a problem with that picture of you painting your life. And that is, in that scenario, you are, as a painter, are somehow separated from your work. So you are painting something, your life, that lives somehow independently of you. You, know, you can take that painting and put it on the wall or just leave it here for uh, several years and it will still be there. But much more precise metaphor of your life is that of a dancer. You know, dancer and the dance are one and the same. You can't have dance without having a dancer. And if dancer stops dancing, there is no more dance. Now, she doesn't care where that dance is going to lead her. It's not like that she decided in advance that with the last tunes of that song that she's dancing to, she needs to be at the exact spot somewhere in the dance floor. You dance because you enjoy dancing and you are dance and dance is you. And there is no fixed position where you must end up. Just enjoy the process. Something good happens, great. Something bad happens, look how interesting. Let me examine my attachments, my resistances. Let me pull out a little bit. Take a look at that situation from a bird eye view. Let me zoom out a little bit. And then it becomes an exciting learning process. Then you will find something about you that you are actually not. You will find some of your resistances or some of your attachments and you can remove them. And that will make you happier and more successful. And with deep inner peace and joy. And I know it's crazy, it's really crazy to believe in that, well, outrageous idea that joy and happiness and peace and purpose will flow through you when you remove your judgments, your labeling, this is good, this is bad, and when you start to accept life that is, in a way that it is. So it is really critically important that you do your home joy, <laughs> not to say homework, home joy from the, that we talked about just in a previous chapter. Because then you will know without really a shadow of a doubt that all you need to do is stop judging. Because when you look at the people who are passing by, and you don't know them, of course, without any judgment, something miraculously happens. Even if you don't project anything positive on them, you just need to stay present. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the dance. And 
when you don't enjoy that dance, when situation presents itself in a way or in a shape or in a form that is somehow creating unpleasant vibrations, you need to notice that and 15 minutes of meditation a day will greatly help you that in noticing that. And then you need to analyze what's going on. And that's all there is to it. You know, if you want to be happy, just be. Okay. Just live in the present. And that's all you have to do. And that's actually, well, let's say it is a path to a happier life that goes mostly through our right part of the brain, right half. It is more intuitive. It is experiential. There is another path that uses mostly your left side of the brain that is a little bit more analytical. And we are going to talk about that from the next chapter forward. But they work uh, particularly good when paired. When you both do the experiential part and the witnessing part and the analytical part of it. So stay tuned, because now things are really going to get interesting.